All right, very casual anime check-in just to say what I've been watching or reading, mostly watching. Uh, so starting with the Jujutsu Kaisen movie, just because it was no secret that I really disliked the series. Not that I even disliked it. Dislike it. It was it was fine. It was average. It did nothing to hook me. It set up a few little interesting premises, but season one did nothing to get me invested in the main cast of characters. And because I wasn't invested in the main cast of characters, I wasn't invested in their interpersonal dynamic because I felt they didn't have any. Um, I'm not interested in what the plot set up for future arc lines because I don't care how it relates to the main cast. I care about the side cast, I'm, so I'm somewhat invested which is what made me really enjoy the movie because that side cast is the main focus. So the characters that I loved, the year two characters, it's a prequel, so they're in year one, and we get this new character introduced, uh, Yuta, Yuta, because Yuji's the one from the series. So Yuta is this new guy. He has a curse attached to him. I love this curse. I think it's Rika. It's, it's been like a month and a half since I watched this movie. Uh, but so this curse spirit is very bent on protecting him rather than in the main series where the curse spirit is just like, eh, kill my host for all I care. I got a bunch of other fingers out there. It's not going to bother me any. So I really, really liked this, uh, new character Yuta a lot more just because he is very gloomy. He's depressed. He can't make friends because this curse keeps killing them and there's nothing he can do to stop it. And overall, um, just seeing him interact with the characters that I do really, really love and seeing him learn to control cursed energy, transfer cursed energy, and just become a competent sorcerer is fantastic. It is Jujutsu Kaisen, so of course the action and horror elements is beautifully done. It is gory as hell, it is violent as hell, everything I love in, in that kind of thing. So the designs, the designs of these creatures and curses was over the top and perfect and beautiful. So I really love that. Um, Story-wise, it's only a movie, so I'm not expecting the depth and commitment and investment that I would expect from an anime series. But I really did like all the characters. I liked how they interacted and their motivations. The plot and dialogue still felt a little shallow to me, but I could just be a little bit still disappointed from the original series. So I'm not going to hold that too much against it. Overall, I did really enjoy the movie a lot, lot, lot more than the series. And it actually got me invested again and looking forward to season two. So I'm very happy for that. I also want to point out that it is currently uh, minus 40, technically it's minus 25 or 26 degrees Celsius, because Canadian, um, outside, and it feels like minus 40, and I am freezing. It is so cold. Got the heat cranked up, and I still can't get warm. Uh, the next anime that I was watching, I gave uh, Millionaire Detective a chance. I only made it like six episodes in, and I just couldn't get into it. I don't think I'm going to put too much effort into a lot of shonen unless I've really been told that it's amazing. I kind of want to go more into the seinen kind of anime, so it's fine. Um, basic premise, a multi, I thought he'd be a millionaire, but no, he gotta be a billionaire. So a multi-billionaire, I'm pretty sure, decides he wants to play cop. So he goes to joins and works with the police detectives and he is solving all the problems possible by throwing money at it. And of course that works. It works very well. Uh, when you can literally just say, here is a bunch of money, tell me or do this for me, or let me buy that from you, then it's going to make solving cases pretty easy. But the reason I couldn't really get into this uh, series is it kind of wants to be a buddy cop comedy. But it's not going as far as it could with the comedy because it also kind of wants to be a drama. So you got like a police officer who's dealing with issues and fallouts from a bad shooting uh, that left him very much traumatized. And he's been demoted since and he's having very much struggles within the police detective. And he's not really trusting this multi-billionaire who's like, why are you here? You can't solve all problems like this yada yada I don't trust you what's your motivation so they got some they're never really friends and bonding at least in these first six episodes that I've seen even though at one point they're like living together 
even then it's just like I barely feel like it almost feels like your next door neighbor got locked out of his apartment and they're just staying at your place for a night until a locksmith comes and change the door. That's not what happens, but it feels like that's the connection that they have. It's like, I trust you not to murder me in my sleep. So yeah, you can crash here for the night. Um, on top of that, a part of the issue is in order to get some stakes and drama, you got to get rid of all the technology that this billionaire has access to that okay so we just to get stakes we need to remove the premise of this show and again nothing hooks me I didn't give it its fair shake really didn't I didn't even give it to the end of the first season but I, I got other things I want to read and watch so I'm just kind of dabbling in a few little things to see if anything hooks me right away uh, unless I'm told otherwise unless I'm told it's fantastic and keep going but uh yeah I've been also told the tone issues between not being able to find a good balance between com buddy cop comedy and actual serious drama never really resolved itself, so I didn't feel the need to continue. But if you want basically Batman, if he wasn't Batman and was just Bruce Wayne joined the police detectives and using all his money to solve crime, then, I mean, might be a show for you. Um, I also picked up a manga that, uh, remember when I said I don't want to just read a manga online, I want to support the artist that was doing it? We're going to ignore that that I said that because I totally, totally found this via legal means to, to read. There is a, what's the female version of Shonen? Shoujo? something like that, uh, coming out. It's an anime called My Happy Marriage. And it's basically, um, girl is mistreated by her family, gets for, arranged marriages are very common, but she gets forced to go to this guy who's apparently very cruel or hostile and known for running away all his fiancés or engagements in like three days. But she's like, I have nowhere else to go. I have to make this work. The family has kicked me out. So I have to make this marriage work and she lasts more than three days and they supposedly will have a nice happy marriage. There's also a little tweak of supernatural elements, which I was very happy for as like some, there's like spiritual sight and can set things on fire and manipulations of mind. So there are supernatural powers involved, which excites me. So I read the first couple chapters just to see if it's a vibe that I want to give a chance for the anime. And I probably will give the anime a little bit more of a chance. It was cute. I love the art style. I really like the characters. But I can see that they're going to grade on me. Because the first I assume saga, I don't think it's popular enough that the Wicked page has broken it down into arcs and sagas. Um, it wrapped up nicely. But then it seems like we're going to go into the, oh, I'm attracted to this person, but I'm so shy and let's confuse the fact that I'm ha having a crush on this person with the fact that I'm sick. How's your health? Are you okay? You have a fever. It's like, oh, I'm fine. You're just very close to me. And I can see that very much grading on me. It's like, you're engaged. Stop it. Um, I don't think the show go... Is that how it... Is that what it's pronounced as? Shoujo. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that genre might be for me. I might have to try the adult version but um yeah it's worth worth a shot i'm like i said i'll give the anime a try i just don't see it working for me in the long term all right so i picked up a one piece movie and to give it a try i've been told i don't really need to re uh, watch them in order so i picked up movie was it six yeah i think so because i was told that's like one piece does horror and at first i was so confused because the art style that they chose to use for this movie was a choice and I thought I was watching a fan made low budget kind of thing at first at first I changed my mind but this sketchy kind of art style was uh, the opening scenes and I'm just like what am I watching what did they choose to do and you could feel that something was just different at first it's like quiet and moody and I'm just like what's going on and we see the water and um it opens with uh, them finding like a message in a bottle to this kind of was it like a spa island paradise kind of thing to relax vacation yeah and also side note the I was confused on or I want I was hesitant to watch this because I'm like I can watch this I'm far enough into the series right 
And I seen uh, Zoro was lifting weights on the ship and they were these teeny tiny little weights. And I'm like, oh yeah, we're good. He'd be lifting much heavier weights if um, it was not past what I've seen. Completely ignoring the fact it was the original character design and that Brooke and Frankie were not even a member of the ship yet or a member of the crew yet. So I'm like, I, I noticed Zoro lifting small weights before I recognize any old character designs or missing crew members. Continuing on, they go to this island, and again, it's just this weird sound atmosphere that you can tell something is slightly off. It is not the tone that I associate with One Piece. And again, I only read the manga, really. I barely watch any of the anime, just jumping in for a couple moments and scenes. Uh, you can feel that it's off. And then they go further into this forest because it's very quiet on the beach. And then, then we're into the One Piece uh, more feeling. It's over the top as the, everyone in the town comes out and welcomes them and they're celebrating. And there's like a whole show and dance and it's colorful and it's energetic. I'm like, yes, okay. I don't know what they were doing at the beginning, but now this is One Piece. The tone is back on. And this mayor, leader of the people... It's just like, if you want to stay here, you have to go through these challenges. We'll put you through hell for this. And every other member of the crew is just like, ah, no, we're, we came here to relax, not do terrible competitions. Let's get out of here. But Luffy's just like, no, I'm excited. Let's do this. I trust you. I trust my crew. Let's, let's do this. So he's all for it. And the first competition is like goldfish catching. So they have this teeny tiny little net. And they see a pond with these teeny tiny goldfish. And they're, they go to catch one only for like the giant, massive demon looking goldfish in the background to jump out. It's like, actually, you got to catch that one. And it'd be, this cute little competition turns into like a exciting fight. And eventually they're also fighting against another guy who's trying to catch the same goldfish. And uh, I think Robin is the one who ends the competition and they get the gold goldfish and all that. Uh, spoilers, by the way. One piece I'm going into a lot more detail than anything else that we're talking about here. Uh, so basically we're setting up the premise that there's no rules for this. Any kind of rules they thought were set up can be uh, tasked aside. You're allowed to cheat in these competitions. And my favorite scene and possibly the majority of One Piece happens when Chopper falls pulls over the side into the water and obviously devil fruit user he can't swim so he's sinking and Luffy in his fear and excitement and wanting to save his crewmate immediately jumps over as well grabs chopper and tries to swim up only to remember that he is also a devil fruit user and cannot swim so someone else has to jump in and save him <laughs> yeah I'm pretty sure it's uh, Sanji who ends up having to pull them both out and yeah God love him for that uh, so the next competition happens and they're on these boats and it's essentially it's like some kind of ring toss. You're both on the boats, two teams, and they throw these hoops over them to, to capture the opposing team. And, but you only need, uh, four people for this challenge. So Nami and Usopp are in one team and Zoro and Sanji are on the other and they're going against the four from the other team. So that's all well and good, except the crew is bickering. More often than not. Even Sanji and Zoro, they're at each other's throat a little bit more. And at one point, Usopp opens something in the boat and he finds some contraption which gets put on with him and it sends him up into the air. He's flying around and Nami thinks that she, that he's abandoned her. So they're very ups they're more upset and at each other's throat and not working together. They still win the competition, but you can... It's like, why are we being more hostile? You can feel like they're, the other contestants are setting them up to be more hostile towards each other. Uh, during this time, uh, Luffy meets some other pirates who were on this island and are hiding from the, he's not the mayor, the baron of uh, this town and the order who's organizing the competition. And there's like, he's not what he seems. And Robin is looking for this uh, flower that supposedly only grows on this island. She's asking questions about it, but no one's really giving her a straight answer. And Chopper meets uh, this family, former pirates, who have been trapped here all this time, and they don't trust him. And it's like, you don't understand, this is not a safe place. And he, they show him this picture, and it's... Uh, an original crew and they all look exactly the same as the pirates or not pirates, the villagers and people here in the participating in the competition. 
except for the Baron. He looks a lot younger. So he's the only one of this group who's aged. And before Chopper can go and tell the rest of the crew what he's found, he gets shot with an arrow and knocked unconscious. We are then uh, like at a dinner festival presentation where Sanji has made himself turn into like a cooking competition. It was, I think, just supposed to be a good meal for them, but he's like, no, nah, I can do this better. So he gets up and shows the chef up. And Nami is talking to one of these people. And she's asking them questions and it's, it's very dark. And there's these candles everywhere. And again, you can feel the tone shifting as they're talking. And eventually the person that she's talking to, he morphs and transforms. And it's like he's melting and wilting away. They also have these little leaves on their head. Uh, but he's, he's, they're literally like decaying in front of her. And she's like, what the hell? Um, it, it's a very sudden shift. And then they're like, where's the rest of our crew? They realize that Robin's missing and Chopper, Chopper's missing. And uh, they start blaming Luffy. It's like, what is wrong with you? How could you not uh, realize that our crew members are missing? How could they be taken out from under you? It's your fault for bringing us here. We wanted to leave. You want to take part in these competitions. And now we're missing them. This is your fault. And Luffy doesn't know what to say. And the next thing you know, the third competition has started. And it's a shooting competition where all the people of the island are going to be shooting at the Straw Hats and trying to kill them. And they're like, just run, run. So they take off running. And Luffy just stays there in shock. Like, what have I done? What have I brought my crew into? I think Nami is the last one to stay with him. She's like, we have to leave. But Luffy does nothing. And so she leaves him to run to safety. And Luffy charges at the Baron trying to attack and fight him. But he's unable to defeat him. It's because all these people are shooting bullets and arrows and everything at him. He has to flee and ends up in an underground uh, tunnel by the owner of the some kind of mustache pirates. I can't remember. Toothbrush mustache pirates. Um, to to safety as they explain what's going on. Uh, when Nami had been talking to the to the other guy, she, before all the craziness happened, she had brought up uh, Gold Roger. And the guy's like, oh yeah, we had met him just like last week or ran or crossed his path. And she's like, he had been executed 20 years ago. What are you talking about? And he's like, what? And that, that's when he kind of started to wilt. And we learn that the Baron has been feeding people to the flower that Robin has been looking for all this time uh, to more or less sustain the people of this island and his crew. And during the shootout, everyone gets captured. And Robin had already been captured previously when she found the flower or her, learned a shipwreck uh, while looking for the flower. Uh, and Luffy escapes, or not really escapes, cause, but leaves the mustache pirate guy to go fight for his crew. And when he gets there, he is shot multiple times with arrows, pinning him to this big boulder. And again, this art style, it just feels so intentional. And it's, it is eerie, it is painful, and you see his struggle. And this, I don't think it would have worked as well with the uh, regular One Piece art style. And you see all the crew members up in this type of weird flower thing, slowly being dissolved and turned into this red light and being absorbed into uh, the flower. As Luffy, his one arm pinned, the other arm pinned, legs are uh, both legs pinned. And all he can do is stretch his neck out to try to make it to the flower as he's one by one losing his crew. And the last one, I think, is Zoro to dissolve into it and to see his anguish and screaming as he watches his crew more or less die in front of his eyes was brutal as hell. Um, the family that Chopper had met, so Chopper got captured because he risked his life to save this little girl. And she, thankfully, is using some kind of hockey to say she still hears his crewmates, even after they've been reabsorbed. So that gives uh, Luffy another bout of after he had been rescued and back into the tunnel and then back up again to fight again. And my God, they cranked the horror elements up to an 11. Like Red Moon, arrows coming down in hordes, blackening the sky. The horror elements of the final fight 
was executed fantastically. I loved it so very much. I I personally, I'll never take, I'll always take more horror over less, so I could have done with a little bit more of just horror in general. I'll always take more, but they found a good spot to do horror in one piece. And again, they're fighting, and he risks his life to save the mustache pirate guy from the, the Baron, and uh, eventually they're able to strike down the flower, but still the crew members don't, like, reemerge. Oh my god, I didn't mention this. Oh no, this, this happens next. Uh, the Baron has this little cute little flower on his shoulder, and when they cut down the big one, they're like, wait, the voices have moved, and it's like they're in in that little flower now. So it transforms into this monster looking thing. And you can see the shapes of the crewmates like within it. And it is like, I have seen this kind of imagery before, like the molding and melting of bodies fused into one thing. And I don't know what, what it reminds me of, but it reminds me of some kind of classic imagery that I've seen. And I love it. That design is everything. It is perfect. I love it. And again, they have to fight this flower thing to save his crew. And again, the final battle. Execute it perfectly. So a big theme in this one is uh, when you are in a pirate crew, you never fight alone. So Luffy says uh, something along those lines. And the friends that he's made, that family of pirates... And uh, the Mustache Pirates all work together. And it is actually the father of the crew, of the family, who gets the final shot to take down this little shop of horrors, tentacle-filled and teeth-ridden monster, and gets the final blow. And then Luffy collapses, waking up back on the beach, quiet and serene once again, and his crewmates are just all around them. I'm not even sure if they remember really completely what had just happened and what transpired. And it was just such a good movie in general. The atmosphere, the horror, the themes, the art design. I know I said I didn't really like it. I thought it was like some cheap budget art, weird art house film. No, I take it all back. You needed this art style for the tone, for the atmosphere. It, it works so well. I am so happy I watched this movie and I'm definitely going to check out some other One Piece movies, but highly, highly, highly recommend. It was excellent. Uh, yeah, there, there was a whole thing with the Baron as well. I suppose I should say the end of his story is pretty obvious. He had uh, lost his crew during a uh, shipwreck incident and everyone had died. So he made a deal with this flower to feed people and sustain like images and kind of things of the crew. And he kind of hears from the ghost of uh, his former crewmates to um, them saying, we understand, but you should have moved on from us. We've already passed on to the afterlife. And it makes him like very sympathetic. Like you can imagine the heartache and loss and grief that you've gone through t after losing your family. And you would give anything to see them again, sustain them. Uh, but as sympathetic as that is, it does not stop Luffy from punching him in the face for what he did to his crew. So no, uh, recommend this movie. All right, I will talk to you later.